Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as of late, you have um, had the opportunity. I, I just want you to know that we're going to start counting stars, okay? Because y'all need to know what counting stars is all about. And so, and while we are sitting up here counting our stars, we want to let you guys know some information that's going to be beneficial for y'all's interests. Now, while it's beneficial for you, it's beneficial for us. Those of you who have these wonderful things known as credits, y'all don't understand. What would you say? He's been praying. He don't want to be counting dollars no more. Go ahead and let him know. One Republic, everybody, in my background. I decided that we were going to modernize it just a little bit. Not not too much modernizing. I've always liked this song, Circles. This song, uh, Passenger, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a fan, you know. Uh, there are several of the artists, but again, this is... This is not what this is one of those songs that they play over and over and over and over and over and over and over again on the radio. But I wasn't a fan of the song because they played it over. I was a fan of the song because of the way it was done. I think the individuals have skills. That's right, you heard me. I said skills. Now look, don't get me wrong, and I'm not putting this group down or any other group down. Ladies and gentlemen, many of the artists today that are making music, they can't sing. They can sing, but they can't sing, and that's the problem. The industry doesn't want singers. They want singers. They want pop artists. Why? Because they want the quick dollar. These artists stay on board three years, and that's it. Now, you you got to understand what I mean by three years. One album. Why? Because they spend the first year putting the album together and releasing it. And then they spend the next year and a half on tour. And then after they come off tour, they talk about, I'm working on my next album. And then you never hear from them again. I mean, they, they, they release another album, but the industry doesn't promote them. You don't hear anything about them. Uh, there's been some uh, people clowning genuine. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all should be ashamed of yourself. Mr. Genuine, that fool can sing, even though, you know, he is older. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But here's the thing. That man has entertained people since he came out with that first song. Everybody in that grandmama was listening to that song by that young man. Pony? Now, I'm not saying, hey, I didn't get Pony at first, but I got Pony now. And I don't appreciate Pony, but differences, you know, open arms, genuine. I know he's been through his stuff, but y'all need to stop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those of you with credits, you're still trying to figure things out. Look, we've been talking about credits for since we started the set packs, 2017. Many of you have had your set packs since 2017, 18, and 19. This is 2022, ladies and gentlemen, and you haven't done any research. I've been doing videos constantly telling people, do your research. Everybody wants to come to me for me to give them the answers to their questions. And I told y'all, that's not how I work. Okay, I'm not your repository for information. You don't just push a button and then I start speaking. It doesn't work that way. I'm not on your schedule. Uh, excuse me, schedule. Hey, look, uh, CyberGhost, you can't come on right now. I, I'm not connected to the internet. So, so stop. All right. Um, it, well, it, 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 it wants to, you know, demonstrate to me that it's a worthwhile program and that I should give it another chance. But we're, we're not there yet. OK. We're not there yet. Um, back to the credits, ladies and gentlemen. It's it really is all right. 
that you all are starting to get it. Now you're starting to understand it, but you still don't get the value of them. Okay? It's not my job to teach you the value of the credits. You're supposed to understand the value of the credits. I wish I could show you my portfolio. I, I showed it to one person and they said, how did you get those figures? That's my portfolio. My figures are a whole lot bigger than that. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you with over 17 awards, 17 awards with more than 60 respondents and most of them government entities and the awards were handed out evenly amongst the parties because they were evenly in default agent to principal notice hey i'm just following their administrative process i told you when the irs sent me a notice telling me i'm supposed to owe them six thousand dollars i wrote them over 30 days ago you think they wrote me back about their six thousand dollars so if the system wants to play i promise you i'm ready to play but when it's time to go toe to toe they cannot tell me that my credits are worthless why because that's what brightly christopher stark did let me say this again that's what bradley christopher stark did he added an arbitration clause to his contract then instead of bradley christopher stark sitting at home going oh, they won't confirm my arbitration award he went to congress and got a public law passed because he did a remonstrance ladies and gentlemen if you're worried about your arbitration why don't you do what bradley did get a copy of bradley's bill Take out all of that information that is specific to Bradley and his beneficiaries, all of that, all of that gobbledygook, and make it yours. The same way you did with the pay attention contract. And then present it to your congressman as a petition for remonstrance. That's all it is. And get your own private law passed. And if Congress refuses, remember, you gave them a petition for remonstrance. They have to act. They cannot ignore your petition. They're going to have to respond, and then you do it right. Whatever mistakes you make, do it right. But give them the bill. Get your Congress member to sponsor your bill. It's not a hard process. You have the right to petition your congressman. But you didn't know that? You can do the same thing on the state level. You can do exactly the same thing that Bradley Christopher Stark did. Look, I've been... Hold on, youngster, uh, Mr. Passenger. Ladies and gentlemen, I shouldn't have to be telling you guys this. I, I should not have to... Would you let her go? I should not have to tell you guys this. You should have realized this on your own. Okay, let me let me give you guys an explanation. I'm, I'm a pause passenger. We told everybody, start your own arbitration associations. I said, we will help you. Do you know nobody came to us for help? But sure enough, when they all was getting in trouble, they want to come to us for help. Because that's people. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you why people were getting in trouble. Because they were letting the courts intimidate them. You don't think the courts following those 23 lawsuits against us with Penny Mac? Penny Mac was the main one. Ladies and gentlemen, wait, hold on. Let me see if I can open it up. I'll, I'll be right back. District Court, I want you to know I'm coming your way. I'm coming to say hello. I'm coming to introduce myself to you punks. And you heard me say punks. Ladies and gentlemen, what Mississippi did was illegal. See, Mississippi said, we're going to be the centerpiece. We're going to talk about SAA. We're going to make SAA wish they had never thought about arbitration. You know 
one guy, <laughs> they refused the, a court summons. They refused to respond back to the court, and so they got arrested. Another person took and literally ignored one of their summonses and got arrested. Now, the second one, we helped out. We took away that stupidity that they were doing to him. The first one, he stayed in jail until he apologized because he was in contempt of court. And he had been there for almost a year. And I told his people, tell him to simply apologize to the court. He apologized to the court. He was released a week later after being in jail for over a year. Well, they done put the fear of someone into him because nobody's heard from him. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't fear the court. The, the court is nothing to be feared. It's government. You, you're not supposed to fear government. You're supposed to fear the sword. That's what Paul says in Romans, the 13th chapter. But you're not supposed to fear government. So let me let, me let you know what's going on here. We hold that each of the acts alleged, except for perjury counts, have been established. We also hold that the acts constitute willful and persistent conduct, which is clearly inconsistent with the proper performance of judges' duties. You want to get a judge's attention? Follow the Fifth Amendment. Bring information against that judge alleging criminal conduct and incorporate their stupid criminal statutes. The same statutes they use against you, you use against him. And in a petition for redress, they can't retaliate. That's the law. Do your research, people. Well, why haven't you done this before? Because I've been too busy trying to do things for you guys. Also, ladies and gentlemen, what I've been sitting back doing, that they weren't paying attention. I told them I was doing it, but they didn't pay attention to me. Ladies and gentlemen, I was letting them dig their own hole. Let me show you about the hole they dug. An act beyond the court's jurisdiction, in the fundamental sense, is null and void. Therefore, a claim based on lack of fundamental jurisdiction may be raised for the first time on appeal. Ladies and gentlemen, we raised it for the first time in the court. We challenged their jurisdiction right off the bat. Pay attention. The remaining issue on appeal is, one, the parties refer to tangentially. What is, it? what is that one? Which is the question of whether the defendant waived the right to challenge the trial court's order resentencing him to a long term, which is essentially an order to challenge, uh, excuse me, the order he challenges in this matter. Defendant has not waived such a challenge. Fundamental jurisdiction cannot be conferred by waiver, estoppel, or consent. Rather, and act beyond the court's jurisdiction in the fundamental sense is null and void. Therefore, a claim based on the lack of fundamental jurisdiction may be raised at any time on appeal. Ladies and gentlemen, now I got to get rid of this because it's here. Well, it's the same thing. So what I do, I don't know why Passenger doesn't want to uh, complete the song. He, I mean, he's starting off, but he's not finishing. So I'm not to talk about Passenger. No, I like Passenger, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Let Her Go uh, reminds me of a song I wrote about my son's mother. Yeah, she's more than just a woman. Some of y'all understand. Uh, anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is a call from jail. Uh, somebody's calling me, and I've always said I'd give them my attention. One second. Gentlemen, I have this policy. Uh, there are a couple of people that call me from institutions, and my policy is that I will always give them my time so they can call me anytime and I'll drop what I'm doing to take their call. I don't send them the voicemail unless I have no other choice. So they have the right to call and I speak to them. However, there are some people whom were contacting me through their significant others, and their significant others have, in my opinion, disrespected me. We don't play that. I, 
ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time for your attitudes. I already have my own attitude. I don't need your attitude. My attitude is enough for me. So I don't need your attitude plus mine. <laughs> That's not going to work. So many people have been communicating with me with attitude. I don't have time for that. And so I don't deal with it. We'll get back to the documents in a second. I haven't forgotten. Um, been involved in several conversations. Like I said, the biggest thing with your credits, ladies and gentlemen, is that you have to do the accounting. You don't need anything other than documenting in a ledger where they came from. Ladies and gentlemen, contact your servicer of your mortgage. Tell them, hey, uh, could you send me a statement of accounting? Don't ask for a certified statement. Just have them send you a statement of accounting. And from that statement of accounting, create your own statement of accounting and show your ledger. Create your own ledger showing that you paid them. Now, here's your, this is the catch-22. Catch-22. Show your ledger. If you gave them a money order, okay, remember, your bill of exchange must be accompanied by an application according to 412. So create an application for every single payment. What's an application? Basically, I need this to be applied to my balance. That's your application. An application apply, application. So you can do a simple application and do a stub and I need this to be applied to the principal balance. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what many of you are not doing. When you are paying your monthly mortgage, tell your friends, your family members, make the payment on the memo line of the check. Those of you who are current and up to date on your mortgage, tell them to apply this to the principal. Stop paying the interest. What you don't understand is the servicer is applying it to the interest only. Yes, they're applying the payment to the interest only. So make it to the principal. Don't worry about it. You can check it. You can find that there are too many cases where the courts have said they can do that. This is Aloe Black, ladies and gentlemen. And he's uh, singing, make me smile. You make me, you make me, you make me, you make me smile. Aloe Black, ladies and gentlemen. And you, those of you who come to understand me, you've come to understand that I have a little bit of respect for Aloe Black. Actually, I have a lot of respect for Aloe Black. Um, I appreciate this young man and the music that he does. Now, let's get back to what we were talking about. We're going to go here. This is what I want to show you guys. The 11th Circuit. You guys know the 11th Circuit. I believe that's Atlanta and that area. The 11th Circuit has held that the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, together with the Federal Arbitration Act, do not permit a party to contest an arbitration award by filing a complaint. So all of you who've been having the courts dismiss your arbitration awards because somebody filed a lawsuit or they asked for sanctions, or the court sat up there and said, I'm issuing an injunction. Injunctions, pay attention, are summary proceedings, but not permitted in a motion to vacate. Go ahead and look at Section 10. Those are the only things that deal with a motion to vacate. So I want you to pay attention. Filing a complaint or an application to vacate an arbitration award, but instead requires that a request to vacate an arbitration award must be in the form of a motion. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all need to pay attention. It has to be in the form of a motion, not in the form of a complaint. So when the court was trying to charge you $480 for filing, your motion to vacate or your motion to confirm, they are summary proceedings. It's not a civil complaint. Ladies and gentlemen, all you had to do was bring this to the court's attention. If the court ignored you, now you get to literally go after that judge. He knew better. Look, U.S. shipment 
Inc. versus Mertz. And this is what you need to understand. Under the Federal Arbitration Act 9, Section 6, a party seeking to vacate an arbitration award must proceed by motion. Summary, disposition. In order to promote speedier and less costly dispute resolution and encourage arbitration, FAA and federal rules of civil procedure do not contemplate a full-blown litigation for the purposes of contesting an arbitration award. Ladies and gentlemen, they may never sit up there and do a motion to vacate in the form of a civil complaint. It's illegal. It's illegal. They can't do it. The law does not permit them to do that. This is what they've done every single time against SAA. Oops. My bad. The law does not let them do that. They do it anyway. So we go after the judges for ignoring the law. Here is the legal standard. Section 9 of the FAA provides that when presented with an application to confirm an arbitration award, the district court must grant the order unless the award is vacated previously. You don't get the vacated in a motion to confirm. Modified, you don't get the modified in a motion to confirm. These are things that has already happened. Vacate it, past tense. Modified, past tense. Corrected, past tense. It's a separate proceeding. Neither erroneous legal conclusions by the court of unsubstantiated fact-finding justifies a federal court review of an arbitration award. They don't get to look at the award where I find the award. This, that. They don't get to sit up there and critique the award. That's not their job. You guys need to understand this. Rather, grounds for vacating an award are limited for those specific or specified by statute, the FAA. Now, Section 10 provides the FAA exclusive grounds for vacator of an arbitration award. Thus, the role of the courts in reviewing arbitration award is extremely circumscribed, limited. Confirmation of an arbitration award is meant to be a summary proceeding. Those of you who were sitting up there, well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You pay attention to the videos. I'm showing you the law. Take these phrases, put it in case text, and pull up the other cases that say the same thing. Get you back in court and tell them I need you to undo that. You guys denied me due process, and if they don't listen, bring information and a complaint against that judge. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. There's so much frustration because people keep asking me, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I'm doing these videos. I'm explaining to people what they should be doing, and nobody's listening. Am I giving you legal advice? Well, this is legal information, and I'm telling you, giving you advice, so it's legal advice. Okay? Remember, petitioning for a redress, they cannot retaliate. What a petition for redress? It's against the law. Now, pay attention. Witnesses and documents concerning the merits of a party's claim are irrelevant. Similarly, the confirmation proceedings is intended to be a summary proceeding, making access to the American discovery rules unnecessary. They were doing depositions. Penny Mac and the court were doing depositions. You cannot do depositions in a motion to vacate proceeding. Dealing with an arbitration. Arbitration contesting an award, you cannot file a civil suit. Been yelling, screaming. They weren't paying attention, so now I bring it to their attention. Pay attention. Pennsylvania Act was enacted in 1927, two years after the Federal Arbitration Act, and adopted by a number of states. Similarly, the United States Arbitration Act, 1925, Section 1, requires the filing of a motion to vacate within three months of the award. If you wait the 90 days, three months, 90 days. If you wait the 90 days, three months, 90 days. If you wait the 90 days, there can be no motion to vacate. There can be no motion to modify. There can be no motion to correct. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the so-called law. But so many of you weren't paying attention. Again, I'm showing you what you need to type in the case text so that you can pull up the sister laws. Okay, in each one of these cases, they waited beyond the 90 days. So in this case right here, 
When moving a vacate an arbitration award, according to the FAA, the majority of courts have held that the provisions of 9, Section 9 are mandatory and exclusive and limit the proper venue of the district wherein the award was made. Ladies and gentlemen, they've been going to Mississippi because they can get a favorable ju judgment. That's called form shopping, F-O-R-U-M shopping. They're not allowed to form shop, but that's what they've been doing with SAA. SAA isn't out of business. SAA is still in business, ladies and gentlemen, but they were trying to ruin SAA's reputation. And they said it was to protect themselves in their sister court. So we want to make sure that they get unprotected. Unprotected sex is not the way to go, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway. The United States Supreme Court has not addressed this precise issue. The Ninth Circuit Court has held that a motion to vacate an arbitration award must be filed within the district wherein the award was made. Oops, my bad. But do you know how many courts have vacated an award when it was filed outside of the district? So let me go ahead and show you something else that we're doing here. An individual mandate, however, cannot sever from the remainder of the act myriad of reforms. The presumption of severability is rooted in the notion of judicial restraint and respects the separation of powers in our Constitution. The act's other provisions remain legally operative after the mandate's excision and the high burden needed under the Supreme Court precedent to rebut the presumption of severability has not been met. Ladies and gentlemen, severability. You cannot have the challenge to the arbitration award and challenge to the contract as a whole. You cannot challenge, anytime they challenge the contract as a whole, it's an invalid process. They fail to state a claim whereby relief may be granted because the contract that contains an arbitration award, arbitration agreement has to be challenged separately and that can only be handled by the arbitrator. The contract as a whole can never be challenged as a whole. They can only challenge certain provisions of the contract, but they can never challenge the contract as a whole. It's called, pay attention, the doctrine of severability. See, the presumption of severability and the presumption of severability. They're separate. They're not the same, cannot include them. So now that you understand this, oh, by the way, this is the complaint that we are responding to some stupidity, okay? That a judge may be civilly liable for acts done without the scope of his jurisdiction is recognized in these cases. Get out of here. Hurry up. They really do, they want me to get that one anyway. The court saying immunity does not apply to protect the judicial officer in a case where the judicial officer causes the arrest and detention of a person in a proceeding in which he is acting without jurisdiction. That is Judge David Novak. And I definitely want to get that ignorant mother attention. Don't threaten us by saying he's going to have the Attorney General do an investigation. Well, now investigate because now even the investigation is tainted because of the motive. Sorry. The principle is treated with more elaboration in Ramaraj. Then we go down here. There is a general principle of universal application to all grades of judicial officers that a judge who is proceeding within the scope of his jurisdiction is not liable for actions of damages for the opinion he may deliver as such judge, nor for any rule or action he may take for the conduct of the business of the court. However, ladies and gentlemen, this principle does not extend to make a judicial officer immune from damages of illegal acts which result in injury to others and deprive them of their legal and lawful rights when he acts, his acts are without the scope and limits of his jurisdiction. It follows that if his illegal acts are without scope and limit of his jurisdiction, he is liable. If damages result to others from such acts, whether he is actuated by malice, cor corrupt, and or impure motives are not in the last state of cases. 
The fact that his motives were impure and bad are considered only as aggravating the damages. When a judge acts illegally without the limits of his jurisdiction, he becomes a trespasser and is liable for damages as such criminally. Criminally. You guys need to understand the laws are there. The provisions are there. You're just not following the procedure. You have to bring a criminal complaint. We gave you guys the judicial complaint form. You didn't understand why we were doing that, why I took all the time to do that. The only problem is I created a password. Told you, memory is horrible. I don't remember the password, so I can't amend the document for you. Absolute judicial immunity does not shield a judge from criminal liability. That's why you got to bring a criminal complaint against the judge. He doesn't have any immunity from criminal liability. Acts of malice and corrupt. The judge loses his immunity if he acts in clear absence of jurisdiction. You must accuse him of acting in clear absence of his jurisdiction. Make him prove he had jurisdiction. Look, Section 18, Subdivision, Article 4, provides that a judge is disqualified from acting as a judge without loss of salary while there is pending an indictment or and information charging him in the United States with a crime punishable as a felony under California or federal law. Every state has this. You got to go after the judge criminally when his acts are criminal, but you have to document criminal acts. So go and look at the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. Get the judge for violating those amendments. Okay? Get the judge for violating those amendment rights. Secured right. A judge is disqualified from acting as a judge when there is a pending information charging him in the United States with a crime? It Look, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't say that the information has been accepted by the Attorney General or they've elected to prosecute. No, it says when it's pending. He is disqualified from acting as a judge in any case. Isn't that interesting? Look, ladies and gentlemen, deprivation of rights while acting under color and authority of law or conspiracy against rights while acting under color or authority of law, that's Title 18 of the United States Code. That comes from the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Get his attention, ladies and gentlemen. Get her attention. These judges that want to act outside the scope of their authority, that want to yell and scream at people, Go after them and get their attention. Sorry. I have to, uh, I'm playing audio from my cell phone. The only problem is, hey, we're going to play uh, My Way by Aloe. But I, come on, My Way. Hold on. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is coming from my cell phone, so it's a bunch of songs. So I can't play my way. It, it, it's, uh, oh, that's why I can't play my way. I can't play my way because it's, uh, it's, uh, shuffle. I'm going to take shuffle off. At least I hope I can take it off. It's freezing up on me. Okay. One second. And I apologize. I'm, I'm on the phone. Mama, he's on the phone. Yeah, I'm on the phone. And I'm working with some things. And it's not working back. I'll be working my way back to you, babe. Okay. I apologize. Let's uh, continue. We're going to let the song, let the music play. We're going to let the song play in my background. And we're going to get back to this. Ladies and gentlemen, here's another case that says the exact same thing. A judge is disqualified from acting as a judge while there is pending an indictment or an information charging him in the United States. Do your affidavits, ladies and gentlemen. Do your criminal complaint against the judge. Call it a statement of information alleging criminal allegations. Do a cover letter. 
Let them know, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm attempting to do. Document, put the codes and statutes for which the judge violated. Get that mother attention so that they don't do it to the next person. Okay? Because I promise you, I ain't letting nobody off the hook. I'm coming to get their attention. Well, what if they put you in jail? What what they going to do, put me in jail? Ladies and gentlemen, the moment they retaliate, they lose. Okay? This is Adele. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to let Adele play. I'm, I ain't heard this song, at least I don't think, not the beginning. So let's do this right here. The first provides for disqualification from acting as a judge while there is a pending indictment or information charging the judge in the United States with a crime punishable as a felony under Arizona or federal law. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ohio case that says the same thing. This is Arizona. Every state, that's why I put these different ones in here. Every state has that. Now, this is the California Constitution. Of the California Constitution provides, uh, this is SAA. Speaking of SAA, give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. This is SAA, and I got to take it. Hello. That was SAA calling me. Regarding the credits that, look, what you guys don't understand, we were going over the couple of trillion dollars in credits that I have and that I donated. Sorry about that beeping in the background. Um, we were going over that information. And while going over that information, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why my, my phone is not letting me get to Adele. Ladies and gentlemen, my phone is saying, you ain't talking to Adele. Uh, give me a second so I can turn the volume down. Okay. Um, we have to document... We've already documented it, but we're being a little bit more thorough now as to where all the accounting, because I have to do my taxes, um, my valuation, my monetary valuation is not small. Okay. And because of that, uh, we have to make sure everything is well documented. But as I explained, everybody's constitution Everybody state has a law which speaks about this qualifying of a judge without loss of salary while there is pending information charging him in the United States with a crime punishable as a felony under California or federal law. Mispersion of felony is your best one to bring against the judge. Deprivation of rights while acting under color and or authority of law is your second best one while coming at a judge. The fact that he has violated rights and had no jurisdiction or ignored the right to challenge jurisdiction, okay, this is your fundamental law. The language came from the Magna Carta, where it is recited that no free man shall be taken or imprisoned or deceased, deceased, in other words, property taken, with or Un outlawed, oh, you can't come here anymore, or exiled, or anywise destroyed, but by lawful judgment of his peers, this is where the jury of appears comes from, or by law of the land, this is the case right here. This is the Right of Petition Act. When embodied in the instrument, it had a well known meaning. As originally understood, it did not point to a jury trial and was not synonymous with a trial by jury. 
jury trial and a trial by jury are not synonymous. They are not the same thing. They never were the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. But in the course of time, the cry for judictum perium is, to the great distortion of history, supposed to find its satisfaction in a trial by jury, not a jury trial. And Blackstone refers to it as meaning a tribunal composed of 12 men and true bonae homies. Hey, homie, what up, homie? Usually vessels or tenants of the Lord, being the equal or peers of the party litigant. And as the Lord's vessel judged each other in the Lord's court, so that the king's vessels and the lords themselves judge each other in the king's court. The judge is not the judge. The jury was always meant to be the judge, ladies and gentlemen. That's what that's saying. So these are the cases. Look, this is some of the things they've said about SAA. The court expresses great skepticism about the validity of SAA's arbitration as an arbitration entity. Really? It's the federal law and the contract between the parties that allows SAA to be an arbitration entity. So ah, that's why they can't do anything. That's why they can't say anything. That's why they can continue to say these lies. Indeed, the courts around the country, this is the conspiracy, have expressed doubts regarding SAA's validity. And we thank them for pulling all these cases together. In Meekins, this judge, this ignorant judge, his name is, I mentioned him before, David Novak. That idiot said that he had to protect themselves and their sister courts from organizations like SAA. That shows intent. And he has no idea how uh, appreciative I was for him saying that, because I pointed it out at the very beginning. He's not a very bright person. And he can play with me if he wants. Because he played with so many other people threatening them, he can play with me if he wants. See, ladies and gentlemen, the last couple of times I went through this, I kept my mouth shut. Go ahead, talk to the people who knew me when I was going through Puerto Rico. I kept my mouth shut. I wouldn't let them file any paperwork into my case whatsoever. I told them because it had to happen a certain way. I'll be putting up a video regarding that before this video. But I told him it had to happen a certain way. Kept my mouth shut. I'm not keeping my mouth shut no more. The purported arbitration agreement and award, remember the judge are not supposed to be going over the arbitration agreement or the award, does not appear to have any material, uh, meritorious basis in fact or law. And sitcom does not appear to be a valid entity of arbitration. Sitcom hasn't conducted a single arbitration to this present day. It's all been done by independent arbitrators. But let's continue. Noting that Sitcom Arbitration Association Award is a bizarre jumble of inconsistent, nonsensical word salad full of legally bizarre determinations contrary to the Hornbrook or contract law. Really? That's a whole lot to be saying, huh? You notice how they didn't point out any particular sections? He just said it. He just gobbledygooked it all. Ladies and gentlemen, if a contract has an invalid clause, then the judge has to point out what the invalid clause of the contract, because remember, it specifically says in your agreement that the contract, if one provision of this is held to be invalid, it does not affect the other provisions of the contract. Can't go after the contract as a whole, especially when it has an arbitration clause. Shh, don't tell nobody. The court concluded, concludes that the purported arbitration award is legally frivolous. Even when read with special selectude do pro, pro se pleadings, the plaintiff's claims arise to a level of irrational, a level of the irrational, and there is no legal theory on which he can rely. That's what the courts have said. Uh, what about the congressional record? District courts generally grant pro se plaintiffs an opportunity to amend their complaint for defects, but leave to amend is not required where it would be futile. That's what they did in Meekin's case. I haven't forgotten about Meekin's case. 
The court couldn't stand me in Meekin's case, but I am coming to say hello in Meekin's case. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what the courts did to SAA as an organization. SAA, they say, well, they didn't hold any arbitration hearing. Exercise sua sponte authority. That means review without anybody else because SAA was only deciding disposition of default. They were all summary proceedings. There is no reason for an in-person hearing in a summary proceeding. There's nothing they could have said. Either they're in default or they're not in default. There's no reason to have arguments back and forth. Either you're in default or you're not. If you're not in default, prove that you're not in default. Okay, but per, this rule arose from the long-standing hostility towards arbitration agreements. The judges have definitely demonstrated that they have a hostility toward the arbitration agreement. The court previously converted TLC's motion to confirm and CNMC's motion to vacate into cross motions for summary judgment. A motion to confirm is a summary judgment motion and a motion to vacate is a summary motion judgment. These courts were hearing them as if they were actual pleading. Okay, here's the thing. The charge in the information and the amended information provided petitioner notice of the place and time of the alleged criminal conduct. You will need to go over these cases, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because these cases tell you how to bring your information complaint, which is your criminal complaint, against a judge or a magistrate. Watch this. That complaint states that the complaining witness accused the defendant of committing specific criminal offenses and provided detail regarding the factual basis of the accusation. It was properly signed by the prosecutor and complaining witness and the magistrate. Now, hold on. That comes later. Doesn't have to happen at the beginning, and there is no law saying that the prosecutor has to sign it. And the magistrate has to sign it. It just says that there has to be pending information. So pend your information, people. All right, let me, I'm, I'm making some corrections of some things right now. So y'all just have to excuse them of me. Hold on. Uh-oh. Let's do it this way. This is easier. I'm just highlighting it the correct way so that it, it gets highlighted. All right. Statement involved a description of the activities of which the defendant is charged. Ladies and gentlemen, provide your statement of information of criminal wrongdoing. Okay? However, the information given to the officer failed to describe the basis for the defendant's alleged criminal conduct. You have to describe the basis, the, the facts regarding his alleged criminal conduct. All right, now this is what I'm working on today. Let's get back to you guys. This is just me letting you know that the information is out there, ladies and gentlemen, for you to take care of. There are many of you who have arbitration agreements. So let me tell you what I'm going to suggest. Take that arbitration agreement and forgive your debtor by doing a 1099A and a 1099C and get your tax credits. It really is just that simple. Forgive your debtor, send them a notification, hey, you are hereby forgiven. Do you have to literally send them that notification? No. You can go to 1099online.com or any other website that lets you file 1099As and 1099Cs. You have to do an A and a C together. Cannot do one separately. If you want the credits, you have to do the A and the C together. You have to forgive the debt. Let me say it again. You have to forgive the debt. Okay? I hope you understand. Some of y'all going to act like y'all don't understand. Shame on y'all. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame on y'all. Sorry, I'm um, messing with some information on my phone again. All right, those of you who, as broke as 
last year, you have companies who are not keeping and maintaining their agreement with you. So take one of the agreements from SAAlimited.com. It's a template. Grab the template that fits your situation. Do your template, people. Fill out your template, then take that template, send it to whomever you're gonna be sending it to. And once you send it to whomever you're gonna be sending to, pay attention. You just wait 10 days. If they hadn't provided the information you're requesting and they hadn't responded, they're automatically in default. Automatically. There's nothing they can do about it. Ladies and gentlemen, now you can go to the arbitrator and get an award. The amount of the award, you just wait 90 days. I'm letting you know the process. This is what we just read that the law says. You have to wait 90 days for them to attempt to vacate and attempt to get rid of the award. However, if they do not provide the information to the arbitrator, when the arbitrator asks them for the information, they cannot provide it to the court. They cannot ignore the arbitrator, which is in every instance what these attorneys have done and the courts have sanctioned such conduct, which is why we get to go after the court for interfering with the arbitrator's right, stepping on, trespassing on the arbitrator's jurisdiction. Okay? So they have no standing. That's where your tax credits will come from. And you'll have an arbitration award to back it up. You'll have the documentation to back it up. Some of you are going to understand what I'm saying. Okay, that's why SAA ain't going nowhere. There are several other people who tried to start arbitration associations. When the court came after them, they're gone. They don't exist as an arbitration association anymore. People are now asking, what do I do with my award? I just told you. Pay attention. I just told you. The rest of you who are looking, SAA is not going to violate any law. SAA is only going to make a determination whether or not the other party's in default. That's what they request for. It's it's a summary disposition request. It's a summary judgment request, people. It's been that way from the very beginning. And the reason why we know we can do this is because Bradley Christopher Stark and his group did the exact same thing. If they can do it, we can do it. Wait, hold on. And you know what Congress said? Congress said, yeah, y'all can do that. Y'all don't remember? Congress said, yeah, y'all can do that. Because they issued a private law saying, yeah, y'all can do that. Isn't it a shame? So we are going to do what Congress says is 100% lawful because you know what Congress does? They make the laws of the nation. They are the only ones that can make the law. And since Congress says it's okay, guess what? That means it's okay. We don't need the court's permission. We don't need them to second guess us. We just operate on Congress. Congress says it's okay. We do what Congress say. We ignore what the courts say because the courts are not in control of the contract. Say that again. The courts are not in control of the contract. The courts never were in control of the contracts. The courts have no say-so when it comes to the contracts, ladies and gentlemen. The courts have no say when it comes to the contracts. We're going to listen to Sugar Pies, okay? Because that's going. this is the song that's going to take us out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this information proves helpful. I hope that it's beneficial to many of you. Again, if you're looking to... You don't have any credits. You don't know where to get them from. I just gave you an understanding of how to get them. All you need is a party that has a contract with you, a previous agreement with you, and they make an attempt to change the terms of that contract in any way. I don't care if they send you an email saying, "Here, here's what we're doing, or here's what you need, or here's a bill. That's a change in terms of a contract if they're telling you owe and you must pay. Then send them your conditional acceptance agreement. Just that simple. And then follow the steps that I just mentioned. And you'll be as right as rain. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, 
thank you for letting me take up an hour of my time to take up an hour of your time. It's a lot of time. Hey, got to go, but y'all take care. I'm out of here. Arriva. Dirt.